Hickok 45, how y'all doing? Guess what I've got? Looks like a Ruger American rifle, doesn't it? You can read. It is, but this one is in 243. I have never done a video. We've just not had a 243, I guess, here at the compound. And it's one of the most common cartridges out there for a lot of you. So I'm sorry we've been negligent. Here it is. We're going to take a couple of shots at 230 yards, and then we're going to go down and uh, talk to you about this firearm, okay, and this cartridge. Uh, we'll see what we know about it. Probably not much, but uh, uh, who knows? You never know. All right, I'm just going to stand and shoot. Stand and miss. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll see if we can hit the gong first, then I might try the red plate over there at 230. We're shooting across the hill, for those not familiar with the range. We're over, shooting over on range two from range one. Ooh, it might be illegal. Watch me miss the big gong now. 243 Winchester. Ah, hear that sound. If I can tell where I hit it. I don't know. I think I hit it right there on the black. All right. We might as well try a couple with the red plate. As I've said before, trying to give you a little education, uh, using a, not to be condescending, <laughs> but uh, using a scope doesn't solve all your problems. Uh, unless you're bench rested, then it solves more. But when you're standing and shooting, oh man, it magnifies believe it or not, right? Your shakiness. But we'll try to pop that red plate. All right. See if I can get steady enough. Hmm. Felt pretty good, but I think I missed. Got him. All right. That's good. I just wanted to hit both of them to let you know. And we'll just leave an empty round in the chamber as we uh, walk. Okay. So if you want to come down to the shooting table with us, feel free to follow us right on down through the leaves here. This is a, a, a nice rifle, as you all know, the Ruger American. It, uh, it's, it's already proven itself. I don't, hadn't been out all that many years, but it... It's just a popular rifle. I wish I had a nickel for every one they've probably sold. And uh, low price, I think you can get them for around 400, you know, just depending on where and maybe which model, what chambering, I don't know whether it's, I don't think any of them come with sights. Uh, maybe wrong, but I don't think they do. Uh, but it's a, it's a low end priced rifle, uh, as you know, but it's not necessarily a cheap rifle. That makes sense. You know what I'm talking about. And there's a lot of them on the market, isn't there? Uh, you know, like Savage and, uh, well, let's see, Ruger. Oh, my, here I go. I launched in, and uh, who are some other? A lot of companies make really nice bolt action rifles now, partly because of technology and the machinery and the CNC machining and everything, just the knowledge. I know I've heard people who actually are into hunting and bench rest shooting and that kind of thing that point out how you used to have to pay thousands of dollars for a custom rifle to get the kind of accuracy and performance you can get out of a four or five hundred dollar rifle now maybe a three hundred dollar rifle so things have really changed and that's all for the better isn't it all right so we've got one more live round in there uh now this rifle comes to me from a friend of mine we've borrowed a gun from him or two in the past the the ruger model 77 357 was his uh, a longtime friend of mine, we used to teach together. We hassled little people for a living together. It was so much fun. It was, we taught on the same hall back in the 70s. And uh, we, <laughs> we had fun. We would uh, we'd pick on the, on, the, on the students and just had a great time, time teaching. Uh, I'd send them down to his classroom for a box of square roots or something. And we would use all kinds of silly things like that. But anyway, he's a shooter, believe it or not. And uh, this was his rifle in 243. Dawned on me, I knew he had this, but we have never done a 243. It's an extremely popular rifle uh, chambering. And uh, I, I don't know why. I had one back in the early 70s. I'll load this while I'm yanking. I had a 243, and uh, it was a, let's see, it was a Remington 700. I think the BDL had the bull barrel. 
and oh that thing was a tack driver i even hand loaded for it and you've heard me talk about how i don't hand load uh, nectar cartridges i just don't do it i that one i did and that may be the only one i did i uh it'd be funny i might find some of those hand loads around here somewhere deep in the barn <laughs> from the 1970s because i bought that in the early 70s and uh, it was a great shooter great rifle uh but then i i just i don't trade it for something and i don't hunt I, I was going after groundhogs at the time, you know, varmints, and then I just did that for about a year or two. And I got into silhouette shooting, shooting steel and everything, got, got away from it, and I just didn't need that particular rifle at the time. But that's been my only flirtation with the uh, 243 cartridge. Uh, and uh, until now, I've been shooting this one for a couple days and, uh, and enjoying it and, and reading about it some more. And it's great cartridge. Uh, before I get into the 243, again, the Ruger American, we've done one in the 308. I'll put a link to that video where I talk more about the rifle. I mean, uh, I, uh, most of you probably already know it and we've uh, talked about it. It's, uh, it's a nice gun. They've got an adjustable trigger, I think three to five pounds. It's a uh, floated barrel, free floated. So you get all of that and there's your safety. You got all this good stuff uh, for, again, a really reasonable price. Now, one difference in this one is that comes in a 22 inch barrel. Uh, my buddy took three and a half inches off this. He, uh, you know, in his later years, he's joined a, a, I don't know, some kind of motorcycle gang. I'm not sure which one it is. And he was finding that the other barrel was just a little bit long for the scabbard on the side of his Road King, his Harley Road King. And it was dragging the ground. He just had a gunsmith take it off. And so he likes it now. It's a lot handier and it's kind of nice. So anyway, that was a joke. No, he did really take three and a half inches off the barrel though. So it was 22 inches. Quick, Uncle Ralph, Kentucky, how long is it now? No answer, wouldn't have expected it. He had probably said 15 inches anyway. Everybody knows it's 19, right? No, it'd be 18 and a half inches. So the barrel now is 18 and a half inches. It started out as 22. And uh, yeah, it's a nice job. I can kind of say he wanted a handy rifle. Uh, he's really not in a motorcycle gang. Well, he might be, I just don't know. Uh, but he has a, a ranch kind of and uh, horses and all that kind of thing and a little piece of woods there He gets out and you know uh, I think he throws this on his gator. He's got one of those gator not an alligator. Okay, not in Tennessee It's a John Deere gator and uh, you know if he sees a coyote or something like that or something messing with his horses You know he can pop it so really handy rifle It's just just perfect for you know what he's looking for. He's got a three to nine Leopold uh, was it a VX1 scope on it? And uh, just a, a nice rig. It's not a $2,000 rig that you have to worry about and fret about if you're out in the weather or something, but yet a nice rifle, an accurate rifle, a sling and you know, everything. So sling it on a gator, sling it on a horse, whatever you want to do, or a Harley. So anyway, we appreciate his lending this uh, rifle to us and I'll quit making up stories about him. Uh, we did teach together, that, that part of it was true. So, the Ruger American, nice rifle and pretty nice scope. Leopold uh, always does a good job, as far as I know. And, and I've been, again, I've been shooting it and really enjoying it. Uh, it's pretty cool. I've got, I ordered some ammo from uh, Federal before I borrowed it. So I've got two different kinds. We're about out of the three or the 195 grain ammo. We've got one box left. And got some, uh, let's see, 55 grain Nosler, ballistic tip, okay? We may shoot some of that. That's uh, that's some faster stuff. I wonder what the velocity is on that. Uh, muzzle, wow, 3850 at the muzzle. So <laughs> that is some fast stuff, okay? And I didn't even check on these. Uh, on the, yeah, 2980, that's that that's in line with what I've been reading. Uh, the uh, Something around 100 grains, that's the thing. Now, if you're of the opinion that a 243 is a wimp round, okay, I wanted to point that out. It, uh, get a 308, get a real gun. Well, you know, 243, one reason it's so popular is, you know, you've got a roughly 100 grain bullet going almost 300, 3,000 rather, feet per second. That's no slouch. You know, you think your 5.56 AR-15 is, is hot enough, don't you? Now, a lot of you don't hunt with it, I know, but you've got a 55 grain bullet maybe going what, around 3,000 feet per second. Well, double the weight going about the same speed. So that's, that's, that's nothing to sneeze at, is it? And that's one reason it is so popular. It shoots flat and it's great for varmints. 
and a lot of people deer hunt with it. You could hunt bigger game. Now, I'm not going to get into all that because there are probably more arguments about what's the best game cartridge for hunting <laughs> than there are about, uh, you know, self-defense cartridges. You, you know how that goes. The best caliber, the best gun, the best bullet, and all that. It's the same with hunting. But it has been proved that rounds like this, the 6.5 Swede round, those kinds of, take an elephant, say, I mean, you know, it's just a matter of how you hunt, what you hunt, and all that sort of thing. Shot placement, all those things are big factors, right? But these rounds will get the job done. Let's shoot some more of them, okay? All right, and we won't shoot a thousand rounds because we have what I do with the other mag. Uh, there it is, I should have been loading. Oh, it's still loaded, that's right, because I just shot four up there. Uh, you know, that means four rounds per magazine. And so, but we'll shoot some here. We'll go across the hill. These are 95. These are the Fusion I'm shooting right now. All right. Let's just go over there. And uh, I've got that scope on. Uh, high, let's put it down to about, I don't know, that looks pretty good right there at about uh, six, five, something like that. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and try that, uh, that orange two liter up there by the gong. I'm not even going to warm up. Got my safety off. All right. Nice little rifle. Let's try the middle plate. Let's try the little plate. Let's try that two liter green one over there. <laughs> now let's try some of the cinder under it. Uh, let's don't. All right, let's get the other magazine and do that. There's two pieces of cinder there. I'll start on the one on the top. It's nice having a, a handy little rifle like this. <laughs> Let's try some red plate action over there. Let's shoot some steel plate. That's a big old, uh, well, how big it is, but it's a heavy square plate, no doubt about it. Let's roll it again. Okay. So, nice little, little uh, rifle, okay? Uh, what else about it? Well, let's go ahead and shoot some of these little screamers. I should have said, oh, we've got some two-liters here. I think they might take out a two-liter. If you were around during, what video was that? Uh, we were shooting a pumpkin. I believe it was the same round, if I'm not mistaken. We surprised ourselves by, uh, you know, some, I think it was mono uh, Nosler ballistic tips, what it did to a pumpkin. I uh, should have dragged out a pumpkin. But uh, these things... They definitely get the job done. A lot of speed involved there. These magazines always seem real cheap to me, uh, but they work. These polymer, you know, magazines. What's well, a pretty bullet, isn't it? Look at that little purple tip. That uh, nickel-plated case, copper-jacketed bullet, and a purple tip. I mean, that's almost too pretty to shoot. <laughs> I just noticed that. I might not be able to sling it down range i might just want to keep it put it on a keychain and get arrested right for forgetting enter a school or federal building with that keychain oh man strange world we live in but uh yeah these are really fast uh, wow so i'm not sure you can even buy ammo that's much less uh weight than that 55 grains for 243 that's really down the scale I, as I've read, the, the ballistically, the, the heavier bullets just do really well. This has a 1 and 9 twist, I think. They said the ideal twist is 1 and 9, 110 for a, a bullet weight around 100 grains. Maybe it's a little bit less like those, a little bit more. It's where it really shines. Uh, people sh compete with these things in 243 at long, long distance you know, shooting, that kind of thing. So it's, it's, it's a 6 millimeter, you know. Uh, you know, same reason, I guess, the 6.5 millimeters, you know, the Creedmoors and all those, Grendel, the Swede round, 
are so great for long range, flat shooting. Well, this is just a little bit smaller, but I guess it has a lot of the same characteristics. So nice round. So I bet you these will be loud. Y'all might want to get your ears on at home there, okay? I'll stick mine in real tight. And uh, I'm going to see what, uh, what one of these will do to a two liter. <laughs> yeah, instant pulverized. <laughs> oh, there's a little pot there by that red one. If you can see it, uh, we put it in the shrink machine. Uh, of course, I've got my uh, differential here on the bore and the sight, but I'm going to try to pop him before I shoot those two liters up there. And that's a little pot. I think I hit the wood. I think I hit the two liter. Click. I think I hit nothing. I've got more ammo though. Right here in my magazine, my shirt pocket. My mag holder. <laughs> oh, there's another pot right there on the stand. There we go. Woo! Smoked it. You know, I don't know if you all can see it. Uh, we didn't bring a pumpkin out, but there's one lying down there by that, well, whatever. I'm going to shoot it, and maybe uh, John can show you what it does. It may do nothing more than normal, but I'm going to shoot the thing. <laughs> it's like it uh, took it apart. So that, again, I guess shows you the versatility, partly, of the 243. Uh, and it, oh, yeah, I've got this... Uh, 308 round out here to show you uh, the reason I have it out is and I'll get the same color out because those those cute little uh, ballistic tip rounds are are so uh, pretty they look a little different and if I put my hand over the the bullet part there you go you see there's there's not much much difference there yeah they're, they look just alike, don't they? You know why? The 243 grew out of the uh, 308. Same cartridge, same case, and they just necked it down to six millimeter, to 243 thousandths, okay? So it's kind of the uh, child of the 308, okay? So they look a lot alike. Now let me get that back over here so I don't try to chamber it by mistake, all right? So, but I thought you might want to know that, okay? I knew you'd want to know that. I'm not going to shoot any more of those really fast ones for right now. I'll shoot a couple more of these. And uh, let's see what else about... Yeah, the cartridge, the 243, is what I was about to get into. Uh, grew out of the 308, and it came along about 1955, okay? 1955. And it has, if anything, it has grown in popularity. Uh, over the years. I remember when I was teaching, speaking of teaching, uh, if I had a student who was into hunting, deer hunting, I'd talk a little bit with them about that, you know, kind of thing. And and uh, every time I would ask, it seems, uh, what they, they hunted with, the answer was 243. Uh, now, that, again, is not to say it's a children's round or it's just for young people or people just starting out. It's, uh, you know, it will do the job for anybody. It's kind of like that condescending thing you hear some people say, well, I've got a 45, but I've got the wife a 9 millimeter, you know, or that kind of thing. Hey, 9 millimeter is good for anybody, the, the most professional shooter out there. Same with the 243. It just depends on your purpose. All right, we had to edit there. John had a low capacity SD card in the camera, apparently. So, but as I was saying before I was so rudely interrupted, yeah, the, the, the 243, it's, it's not a young person's cartridge or anything like that. It's a great cartridge for a lot of different applications, just depending on your skill level, what type of rifle you would have, what you're hunting, what you're shooting, all right? It might be the perfect uh, cartridge for you, no matter you know, what you're doing. Uh, so, But I wanted to point that out. It is extremely popular. I, I hear so many people say they hunt with a 243. They really do. And, and I know what I was about to say. Again, its claim to fame is it is very effective. Now, it's not a 
it's not a 300 wind mag, of course. You might need a 300 wind mag, you know, something more powerful. Uh, but it's it's great because it's low recoil. It, some of the same things that make the 6.5, you know, Creed Moors and the Swede round, all that's popular. Uh, an, an effective round, uh, flat trajectory, very accurate. Uh, the low recoil of it, you know, just all those things combine to make a lot of people a better shooter, for one thing. And uh, so, anyway, I mean, it does no good to have a 375 H&H &H Magnum, you know, and and you flinch so badly, you, you miss whatever you're shooting at. You know, you've got that that issue. It's like, there's probably people carrying around uh, by the same token a handgun for self-defense, and they think they're so well armed because they've got a 10 millimeter or 45 or some really really hot round 357 Magnum. The, the hottest round it'll possibly stand or whatever it is, maybe even 357 Sig, but yet, you know, if they had to pull it quickly and hit that stump there, they might not be able to hit it because they flinch so badly. So, as I pointed out before, a person with a 380 who can actually hit and keep their cool is way better armed than a person with a 357 Sig, 357 Magnum, 44 Magnum, or whatever cartridge you want to name, uh, 10 millimeter, uh, uh, who who is not going to shoot it well, you know, for whatever reason. They're recoil sensitive, they don't practice enough, or, you know, so you all know that. I ain't telling you nothing, right? Uh, so anyway, great round. Let's shoot it some more. Got a few more things to hit here. And uh, if I can think some more lies to tell you about it, I'll, I'll probably dream those up too. How's that? It takes a while to make up all the lies I usually make up. So like I said, my buddy's gun. Uh, can't wait to do the torture test with it, the bush hog test. All right, what should we shoot that we haven't shot? Well, let's put a couple on the target over here. All right, maybe I'll even remember to put this one on eBay. I keep forgetting with these things. Look at that. <laughs> All right, now the fact I hit the bullseye, <laughs> it's not exactly a great feat from whatever, seven, eight yards. But uh, what I was doing is sighting, as I pull it up, I had to figure out where to hold above the bullseye in order to hit the bullseye because you've got that, that differential there on the board. So I was pleased that I hit it. All right, did I put one in? I think I did. Let's go back over there and uh, put one on that little red plate. Maybe I didn't put one in. We'll find out. Ah, safety's on. No, it's not. You know what? I didn't even cock it. Not only did I not put one in, I didn't do anything. Uh oh, too high. Yeah, I'll hold around the bottom of it. Got to talking to you all. I'll blame it on you all. It's your fault. Everything is your fault. If I miss, it's your fault. All right. I mean, think about it. Y'all are always looking over my shoulder. What if somebody was always looking over your shoulder, right? You might miss, right? They might make you miss. Okay, anything else? There's a bowling pin. I think the 243 is especially suitable for bowling pins. What did I tell you? <laughs> There's another one. I'm uh, Let's see. Let's shoot it on the top. Yeah, flip it down. <laughs> okay. There's a paint can. Now one round left and you know where it's going. See if we can spray that two liter. <laughs> yeah, that did it. So uh, let's see, well, now, while I was shooting, I, I didn't think of any more lies. I'm sorry, so I can't make up any others. But uh, if, if, if you are, uh, uh, again, trying to do rifles you know, that hunters might be interested in, even though I don't hunt, and we try to get firearms occasionally that maybe I don't even like, but there's a lot of requests for it. Or I know that a lot of other people like it. And then I try to be honest about it. I tell you that I, yes, I don't I like that Chiapa Rhino. You know, I'm never going to buy one of those for myself. In the video, I talk about it being ugly and all that, but it shoots well. Uh, some people are pretty sensitive about that. They don't like it when I am honest about their gun. I'm sorry. I'm, I, I don't dislike it as a firearm, just like the Chiapa Rhino. It was, it was a good shooter. I remember that thing and being able to hit with it and felt good uh, as far as the recoil and everything. Uh, it's just that I, I didn't like the gun. I don't want one, you know, so, but anyway, so don't give me a hard time if I pull out a gun that I don't like, but, uh, or, or I, or I have problems with it. Okay. Trying to be honest with you. 
uh, all, always. And uh, so anyway, uh, but I don't hunt is where I was going with all that. And uh, but but I want to do more hunting rifles. You know, uh, a lot of people hunt or they like rifles like this just to hunt steel or just to shoot, go out and shoot target shoot with it with a scope. So it is fun, even though it's just a, a bolt gun that holds four or five rounds. You know, some of my very favorite rifles are bolt guns that hold four or five rounds. Well, it's the O3 Springfield, the Model 70, you name it. i uh, got several Swedish Mausers, all the Mausers. I just love to shoot those things. I just generally don't have, you know, scopes on them. So, uh, but anyway, th this is a very, very uh, popular combination. Nice scope, nice rifle, very popular rifle, hunting rifle these days. Uh, you know, doesn't uh, require a second mortgage to buy it. And so it's something a lot of you might have interest in. And, and if you've never fired a 243, you're not familiar with it at all, uh, I think you'd really like the, the cartridge. Now, it might not be enough for whatever you're doing, uh, but if you're just getting into shooting or think you might want to hunt, uh, you've got varmints or you might even want to deer hunt or something, you live in that part of the country, you know, it might be enough. And uh, I know you would enjoy shooting the cartridge because it's very pleasant to shoot. You can probably tell in the video, not much recoil. And, uh, and you know, it's just, just easy to shoot well if you have the scope on, okay? So, pretty neat little rig. Uh, the 243 around since uh, 1955. It's still going strong, extremely popular. Probably every rifle of this type on the planet that's, you know, is chambered in it. You could find it in 243, no matter what, you know, company it is. So. So easy to find a, a, you know, a rifle in 243, no problem. And it is, it's 243 Winchester, by the way. So that's the cartridge. And I've enjoyed shooting it. So uh, John and I are going to be about doing the torture test next, and uh, we'll let you know how that goes. And uh, if there's anything left of it, we'll, uh, we'll return it back, maybe a couple of parts that won't be destroyed uh, to my buddy. That was good. All right, that's pretty good. Wait a minute. Are you guys still here? All right, well, since you're here, let me tell you guys about our friends over at SDI. You can check them out at sdi.edu. They are a fully accredited online distance learning program where you can be certified in gunsmithing or get an associate's degree in firearms technology. So if you think that's something that you'd be interested in, go over to sdi.edu, check that out. Also, our friends over at Valtech, valtechsafes.com. Don't forget to check them out. You've seen their safes on the shooting table many times in our videos. Cool little pistol safes and uh, a lot of different options for them and stuff. Also, check out um, shootsomesteel.com. We have a lot of steel targets from them. So, you know, go check their website out. I'll see what all they have. And also, if you want to see us in different places out on the interwebs, you can find us on Facebook and Instagram. Hickok45 on Facebook. There's a John Hickok Facebook, which is who I am. There's a the real Hickok45 on Instagram. And then there's a John underscore Hickok45 on Instagram, which is my stuff. And then there's um, also Hickok45 and Son YouTube channel. And there's uh, full30.com. There's also, we have a website too, hickok45.com. You can access a lot of our information over there. It's still kind of a work in progress. Um, and then there's our t-shirts are over there too. So uh, check all that stuff out if that's something that you're interested in But just wanted to remind you of it and appreciate you guys for watching the videos and I'll see you later